Hey, what's going on guys? Nick is here with 917 Smith and today I want to break down for you the understanding of tracking insurance for your business. This knowledge is crucial and takes me years to understand properly and today I want to share this with you. So let's jump into my computer so I can show it to you in depth. So today, as I said, we're talking about the insurance for your trucking business and understanding of each policy step by step in depth. Uh, meanwhile, I will try to make this video as short as possible, but in the same time, understandable. So why is it important to understand your insurance policies? Well, that's pretty much simple. The more you know, the less you pay to the person who know, right? That's all about the understanding and that's all about, I would say, being on the same page with the person who's gonna help you with your insurance policy, whether it's a insurance company directly or the insurance broker, it doesn't really matter. So let's dive into the step-by-step -step overview of of the certificate of liability insurance let's pay attention to that part here it says producer and this little part here yeah i think it's pretty much self-explanatory but producer is someone who produced this particular certificate for you this might be the broker or the uh, insurance company itself. Here you see the information of this producer, ABC Insurance from Nowhere Street Suite 5, Vancouver, North Carolina. And here you see the contact information of that company and the email address. So the email address is normally used to verify by the brokers if this certificate is legit and if needed to contact via the phone and stuff like that. So here, we see the contact name which says customer service or it you can see there the exact person point of contact name who provided this this certificate for your company within this producer now let's jump into the insured part but i think again that's pretty much self-explanatory this is your company this is insured company john doe trucking llc with the address okay and the zip code and stuff now let's move to the interesting part we see here the thing that many people do not understand for real so this is insurance affording coverage or underwriter so this is really important to understand and remember this insurer a insurance b and insurance c and stuff because we will come back uh, to that later so this is basically the insurance company who provide particular policy for your business. So in that case, we have two insurers or underwriters, again, as, as a so-called Crom Enforcer Identity Company and Berkshire Hathaway INC. Here you can see the NAIS number. NAIS number is a number that the National Association of Insurance Commissioners assigns to each individual underwriting company. And this is really important because by having this number, you can verify the rating of that company, their power, and if they're legit. Okay, so that, that's important to know. Uh, so this is uh, open data. It's available for everyone. So now we move to our policies. So remember, we had here insurer A, insurer B, insurer C. What does it mean? Basically, this means under one certificate, several insurance company might provide insured with different policies. In that particular case, we have insurer A, which is Crom and Forster Indemnity Company, provides John Doe Trucking LLC with commercial general liability insurance. And that's really important to understand because, yeah, as I said, many people do not know about that. As you can see here, insurer letter B provides automobile liability insurance for John Doe Trucking LLC, which is Berkshire Hathaway. So I think it's pretty much easy now, and I hope that was clear, right? So it happens when you can see 
Insurer C, which is another company which provides the cargo insurance for this trucking company. So it's not necessarily uh, the same one, right? So I think it, it's clear now. Dive into the types of insurance policies, right? So first of all, let's talk about commercial general liability and automobile liability. What does it mean? What does it give to us? So the main part here you should understand and basically your trucking business cannot operate without having the proper level of automobile liability insurance. This is the requirement by FMCSA to have automobile liability insurance for bodily injury, combined single limit, $750,000 for commercial motor vehicles. This is really important to understand. So what the automobile liability? This coverage is essential by law and protect against the insurance and damages caused by the insured vehicle. So this only kicks in at the time when the vehicle scheduled under this policy hit another vehicle, another property, or anything like that at the time performing business. So I hope that's clear. Primarily liability is for motor carriers with their own FMCSA trucking authority, primarily pays the claim when the truck caused an accident while operating for business use. But automobile liability is not limited to that. Whenever uh, we are hiring, and basically, again, you're obligated by law to have automobile liability, not just for your business, but also non-tracking liability, which is so-called NTL. So non-tracking liability is for the companies who are, uh, for basically for owner operators primarily, who are under permanent contract uh, lease to a motor carrier. So whenever we hire the owner operator to be leased under our MC number, we require to have non-tracking liability because when you're operating for business use on behalf of your carrier, you are covered by the primarily liability. But non-tracking liability covers you for personal use when you are not operating on behalf or for the benefit of the motor carrier. At the moment where you, when you are not under the dispatch, non-tracking liability will cover you, okay? And anything that is under this patch, meaning that you operate for the motor carrier you lease to, you're covered under automobile liability, primarily liability. Then we have the variable here, like unladen liability. Unladen liability is so pretty much straightforward. Um, let, let's just get back to non-tracking, okay? Because non-tracking liability can be really confusing because of the words operating on behalf or for the benefit. This kind of tricky situation, for example, taking yourself off dispatch does not mean you're automatically in non-tracking liability territory. Other examples of trip deviation or mechanical works have also been judged by the court to be business use but not NTL, non-tracking liability. So it was still considered business use, okay? And that, that's something, as I said, tricky with non-tracking liability. Whenever we talk about unladen liability, comparable to NTL, it's straightforward, okay? Because unladen liability, it clearly states that if the owner operator has a loaded truck, then it is under dispatch for business use. Again, when he has a loaded truck, then it is under dispatch for business use and the motor carrier primarily policy pays the claim if occurred. If the truck is without the load, it is unladen. So this owner operator coverage is far broader than non-tracking liability. Now, bobtail liability is also a type of automobile liability coverage. is designed to pay a liability claim 
when a tractor is without the trailer. It's not that common nowadays because basically non-tracking liability covers the same thing. It's time to pay attention to what automobile liability applies to, right? It's any auto, scheduled auto, all owned autos, hired autos, and non-owned autos. Whenever you renting or leasing the equipment, you need to go for hired or non-owned autos. Okay, this is uh, just for you guys to know. Now, what commercial general liability gives us? This is another really interesting situation here. Commercial general liability covers a business for personal injury, property damage, and bodily injury, not necessarily because of vehicle usage. This is very important to understand because with automobile liability, the only case paid off is whenever your vehicle is involved. But with commercial general liability, the vehicle is not the case. As long as the damage or injury was caused by your operations or happened on company property, general liability kicks in. So to give a better picture of what general liability covers, uh, some examples, right, for you guys to understand. So let's say someone slipped and fall inside your trailer. Well, it's not going to be covered by automobile liability, but someone still can try to sue you for that, right? Damages or fire caused by your action at a rented location. Let's say the driver spent a night in a motel and you uh, rented this room for him on the company behalf and he caused a fire, right? So commercial general liability kicks in in this situation as well. Or let's say your driver decided to use mcdonald's logo to put on his trailer you know to advertise something without the permission just for example and then the big company comes to you and they sue you so it, it has nothing to do with your vehicle right it's just commercial general liability which means that vehicle is not exactly the case in this in this situation as you can see, this is a great extra coverage to have to give you the general coverage for generally all of the vol occurrences, you know, but it's no way replaces any coverage whatsoever for accidents while driving. That's why it is important to have both of them. And I would say, I don't know the brokers who will take you on board without commercial general liability because they want and basically we as a brokerage company we want our customers to be covered as well from such situations you know now what's the difference between claims made and occurrence cases claims made cover you for a particular time period and covers the claim that is made during that period even if the if the event itself happened earlier or later but occurrence policies covers claims that occurred during a particular time and won't help you if the event occurred before the policy went into effect okay i hope this this is uh, clear now let's move to the part covering you as a worker or covering you as truck driver right so worker compensation we you can see some employer's liability, but um, 917 Smith as an owner-operated company, we're 100% owner-operator. We don't use that because only 1099 contractors work for us, but we do require them to have occupational insurance. This is basically the same thing. Occupational accident insurance is the supplemental insurance to help cover medical, death, or disability claims resulting from on the job injuries so let's say if you drive if you have been driving the truck and you went into the you know crash and you lose your leg or something so occupational insurance you will see here that's going to be covering you and we do require every 1099 contractor to have this insurance with him to be covered from 
accidental death, um, you know, paralysis, temporary disability or continued disability doesn't really matter. Being honest with you, it's not that expensive to be covered with and you might be covered up to $2 million. So yeah, I think it's something worth. Also need to say about the umbrella liability and excess liability. This is basically the two same things, but what does it do? As a tracking company, you may have gaps between your policies or your primarily liability insurance too low. Let's say if you have $1 million in automobile liability and the claims occurred during the truck driving, if let's say someone is uh, filing $1.5 million claim on you, in this case, umbrella liability kicks in and it covers the difference between your commercial general liability and automobile liability up to, so it's umbrella covers extra 500,000, right? So again, this is pretty much simple, not that expensive to be covered with, um, but that's still a uh, you know, good way to cover these holes and increase your limits of liability. But again, you need to, uh, to double check and read the policy details carefully to see what this covers because some policies may exclude key risks in your operations, okay? Now, let's move into the cargo coverage. Motor truck cargo coverage, basically self-explanatory again, covers the goods value again, the lost or damaged during transit. Whenever you holding anything inside your, your trailer and it uh, goes within this limit, right? So you covered. If anything happens, if you have total loss, I mean, anything, so this is when motor truck cargo covering anything that was inside your trailer. Under the motor truck cargo, also we have a non-owned trailer physical damage or trailer interchange policy. So this is something important to understand. Whether you're renting the trailer or do power only movement, load out trailers, non-owned trailer or trailer interchange coverage is crucial for you because this will cover the physical damage for this trailer. But it's, it's really important to understand the key difference between non-owned trailer coverage and trailer interchange. So whenever you're covered with trailer interchange policy, the particular trailer you're hauling need to be listed on trailer interchange agreement. This is important. Without this trailer interchange agreement, if anything happens, insurance company will never cover that trailer for you. But whenever you have non-owned trailer physical damage coverage assigned to your policy, you're good to go. So any trailer that is hooked up to the truck, which is listed under automobile liability, of course, will be covered with a non-owned trailer insurance again limits are different for cargo you can level it up up i, I saw the maximum of one million dollars i had a customer uh we moved the crushing plant for them and they required one million dollars per load in motor truck cargo uh again non-owned trailer i don't see the reason to go higher than eighty thousand dollars but again different companies have different uh you know requirements and that depends but normally if you want to do if you want to rent the trailers or you do power only 50,000 is more than enough normally reefers might be more expensive but with dry van 50,000 is, is is more than enough under the motor truck cargo also reefer breakdown is included so you you can choose if you haul refrigerated freight you go with reefer breakdown and you're covered with uh, any loss caused by reefer breakdown. Here we have scheduled unit, but not every producer will put it, uh, put it out there. But just so you know, you basically can put anything right here if uh, it's required by the broker. Let's jump into the last part, certificate holder. So certificate holder is just a person or the company who is receiving a certificate of insurance from insured. The insured is giving the certificate of insurance to the certificate holder to prove they have proper coverage. 
uh, certificate of insurance that do not change an insurance policy in any way or, or gives the certificate holder the ability to make a claim on the policy. They simply show proof of coverage at that moment. This is important to understand. Any companies that will be listed here, it's just you know making sure that uh, this policy is legit and all uh, all policy are up to date and stuff like that. But other thing is additional insured. Additional insured policy might be requested from you by the broker in some cases. An additional insured is somebody who benefits from the coverage of another policy. This includes the ability to make claims under the policy. A certificate holder can request to be an additional insured on the policyholder policy, and this would be shown in the certificate of insurance, normally somewhere in here. So yeah, it's again, uh, it's pretty much simple. If you if someone asks you to uh, make additional insured policy. This means that this particular company who is listed under additional insured will be able to file a claim against you without even letting you know. Of course, no one will pay anything with, without you, but still. And that's uh, normally a requirement with uh, really expensive loads or whenever you're renting the trailer. Hey guys, thank you for being with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found this information valuable. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, uh, leave the question if you have any. Um, that really motivates me to make more and I hope to increase the quality of videos for you from one to another. Thank you so much again and have a great day.